A truck driver involved in a horrific freak accident is getting support after being sentenced to prison for an unbelievable amount of time. So now, a uh, 22-year-old Cuban immigrant, Rogel uh, or Rajal Aguilera Medeiros, was driving a semi-tractor uh, trailer in April 2019 when he lost control of the vehicle and ultimately caused a 28-car pileup. Now, four people were killed in that pileup, unfortunately, um, and a lot of people were injured. Now, he was charged for that and found guilty on 42 different counts, including vehicular homicide, extreme indifference, assault, and reckless driving. Now, because of the number of counts in which he was found guilty, he was subject to mandatory minimum sentencing laws under uh, or guidelines under Colorado law. His sentence is 110 years in prison. And he's 22 years old. And if this sentence holds, he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison. So that's it. I mean, the guy's life's over, right? I mean, yes, it, it, as it seems so far, it is. Now, again, there were real victims here. Uh, again, four people were killed in this crash. And this is something that he's got to live with for the rest of his life. Now, of course, what was going on here is, is there culpability in his hands? A little bit. And I'll explain that. Um, District court, uh, court Judge Bruce Jones said that his hands were tied when it came to the sentencing, but said that he had made a series of terrible decisions, reckless decisions, referring in part to uh, speeding. So he had sped. He did not go into uh, a lane for trucks that have lost control, I guess. Uh, there's a lane where that, that slows people down. But at the same time, he also had a malfunction in his truck. The brakes wouldn't work. The brakes did not work correctly. And so this uh, runaway truck ramp would have might helped him to slow down to avoid hitting any cars. But at the same time, you're going to give somebody 110 years for an accident. Again, he's made mistakes, sure. But 110 years worth of mistakes? This is horrifying. And, and by the way, here's the thing. The trucking industry, I think, deserves a huge amount of the blame for this. Again, I, I, what I know from the trucking industry is that it's quite brutal. In fact, trucking is actually the seventh deadliest job in the country. And it varies from year to year. But uh, truck drivers have actually reported the highest number of casualties in 2019, an astounding 1,005, and have a fatal injury rate of 27 per 100,000 workers. So that's, I mean, considering the amount of trucks that we have on the road and how much, I mean, we're in the middle of a supply chain crisis. And so I think a lot of you have probably noticed how much, uh, you know, this country depends on trucking, on freight transport. And so now the working conditions for truck drivers are actually quite terrible. Drivers complain of low pay, long hours, and an industry that treats them like cannon fodder. While labor economists and trucking experts describe the industry as one where deregulation and constant pressure to deliver goods at ever cheaper prices has resulted in working conditions so poor and pay rates so low that they amount to what is considered to be indentured servitude. A lot of truck drivers, especially ones who are newly minted, right, are suckered into it. So now there's uh, companies that are like, oh, we're, we're going to train you. We're going to train you to be a truck driver, but you got to sign up for a year. Now, what they don't tell you is that in order to get trained, they charge normally somewhere around $8,000. So if you don't sign up to drive truck for a year and sign a contract, you'll be charged $8,000 to reimburse them. That's a scam. Now, of course, as a result, companies that train these drivers have turnover after a year of about 100%. So almost all the truck drivers that they recruit leave after a year because the conditions are so 
god awful in the industry. Disgusting, right? And so now others get roped into worse schemes like the owner operator scheme in which they have to lease their trucks for the company itself. And so if you're not moving freight because people get paid by the mile, if you're not moving, you ain't making any money. And so it turns out that you have an incentive where the more you deliver, the faster, the more you make. That incentivizes speeding, which is what this young man had done, not taking breaks because, you know, you can't meet deadlines if you're sitting. You don't take breaks. You don't get adequate rest, which again, impacts your mileage. By the way, when they get there too, you don't get paid for when they're offloading their truck or when they're putting things on the truck. And sometimes they're pretty long wait times. You're not getting paid for that. You ain't getting paid unless you're moving. And so all of this creates terrible work conditions that push drivers into constantly driving, whether or not they're tired and it makes them speed or at least incentivizes them to speed and then you know, not use restrooms. It, it harms their health because of constant sitting. And so, and, and not only that, but again, these conditions create accidents as well. And so, yes, there's that. Now, if you combine that with poor oversight of the industry itself, some of these companies don't maintain their trucks the way that they should. All right. And by the way, owner operators, owner operators also do not get, um, uh, sometimes are not able to keep up with the maintenance on these trucks because of how expensive they are to repair. And so what happened here is that this person, he ended up with brakes that had malfunctioned. So here he is going along and yes, he's speeding because he's trying to make rate and he's trying to get there on time. And then, oh no, my brakes don't work or they don't work that they're supposed to. And then an accident, one thing happens, one thing leads to another and you have a massive pile up and people lose their lives. It's horrible. Now, add in this, the fact that there was no drugs or alcohol involved in this. He was not impaired. Yes, there was a little bit of carelessness, but I think driven by the industry. But yet this man gets 110 years in prison as a result. That's horrifying. You take all these facts together, this case, and now you have four, over 4 million people signing a change petition saying, let him go. Let this guy go. You're, you're really going to imprison him for the rest of his life? This change.org petition had requested that Aguilera Maderos be released and have his sentence uh, commutated as time served. And it's reached about four and a half million signatures since he was uh, sentenced last week. The petition reads, this accident was not intentional, nor was it a criminal act in the driver's part. No one but the trucking company he is slash was employed by should be held accountable for this accident. No, we are not trying to make it seem any less of a tragic accident than it is because, yes, lives were lost. We're trying to hold the person who needs to be held responsible, responsible. The trucking company has had several failed inspections since 2017. They have found mechanical violations in their trucks, meaning they do not maintain them that the way that they're supposed to, probably because of costs to try to save money. These companies cut corners to save money and that causes death. And when, when that happens, are the truck, uh, are the trucking companies liable? No, no, it comes down to the driver. Because of course it does. Of course it does. And I'm going to put the link in the description uh, for this uh, petition, by the way, for you to sign. Now, in addition to the call for clemency, 
or commutation, some truckers have actually decided, we're just not going to deliver to Colorado. We're going to refuse to enter the state of Colorado. I've got a couple of uh, those responses here. Uh, one person says, I really hope no trucks to Colorado protest causes economic and supply chain issues. Free Rogel Aguilera Medeiros, fuck this Jim Crow era justice system. Another person says, I think that's dope them, dr drive, uh, them truck drivers refusing to go to Colorado because ain't no way in hell that dude was, posed, was supposed to get 110 years for something out of his control. And by the way, uh, one truck driver, David Splain, tells CBS Denver, quote, it's unbelievable, honestly, because it could happen anytime, anywhere. If the brakes fail, the brakes fail. It's a malfunction. Now, even if you agree that he made some mistakes, 110 years, that's insane. They didn't just throw the book at him. They threw the entire library. And by the way, one more here uh, tweet from social media. Mexican rug dealer, which by the way, fantastic name, makes a great point. Points out that Ethan Couch killed four people while driving drunk. His blood alcohol level was 0.24. Afterwards, he fled the country was caught, sent back, and was given, not jail time, 10 years of probation. And then 720 days in jail for violating probation. Where is this guy? I mean, that has an accident, and it's horrifying, by the way. Kills four people, but gets 110 years in prison. I wonder what the difference here is. I wonder what the difference is. Hmm. Maybe it could be a racist two-tier justice system? Maybe. Either way, the time that he has spent in jail for this, and the amount of, I mean, just the amount of sorrow that he has to go through, knowing that he had killed four people That's going to stay with him the rest of his life. The guy suffered enough. Let him go. Let him go. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.